Okay, welcome everyone. So this is just a bit of a unboxing video and then we'll have a look on the motorbike of the Garmin gear I got. Um, so I did a little video previously where I introduced getting this stuff um, for the motorbike and for, and for camping. Obviously just, just the actual GPS map 60 cipher when we go camping and hiking. So I end up getting the um, backpack tether. So obviously this is to go in your backpack strap and you get about 14 inches of cord or something so you can grab it, chuck it back on with Velcro. So that obviously goes directly onto the GPS map on its back clip. Um, then I got the handlebar mounting kit. It says for the Zumo, but it's really for anything that uses the um, amps, four-way amps mount. Um, quite reasonable. It's their equivalent to like a RAM mount kit. I think it was $70 for all this with a double joint. We'll have, open up, have a look. And then this one. So these two obviously get mounted back to back, and then I can get on the bike. Because the aim is to get it on the KLR's top navigation bar. I've already got the iPhone to the left in vertical. Hope you're going to fit this to the right. With the RAM, obviously, with a couple of angles, I can bring it out a little bit. So we'll unbox and have a look. First, we'll have a look at the backpack tether. Because um, again, main purpose of the GPS maps isn't really for the maps. I just got it because it was on special. So that was $679 Aussie dollars compared to the Mini 2, which doesn't have near the features of this, was 600 So I bought it just so I got the maps, but mainly I might wear it on myself because if you crash and fall off the bike, you want to be able to use the SOS. In saying that, I have heard that if your mobile phone is linked, obviously Bluetooth, um, so if you don't fall too far from the bike, and this is on the bike, I think you can activate the SOS from the phone app. Don't quote me, I'll have to find that out. So reading the manual. Big thing I did see with these is spend the time, read the manual, learn all the features, couple of hours work, because there's a lot in here you want to be able to utilize to its best capabilities. Um, so this is the backpack tether. So very, very simple. Just a bit of cord that goes around your strap on your backpack, whichever side you want, and then clip it into the device, then you just chuck it back on, rip it off, have a look at your map, chuck it back on. So really good for obviously for you when you're backpacking and hiking, and to wear on yourself if you're on your motorbike and you, you know, are in a sketchy spot where you think you might come off even, but you probably should just wear it on yourself the whole time. I'm going to rely on my iPhone with downloaded maps from Gaia Maps or Maps.me for the map aspect. So yeah, I think this will be more worn on me. Um, Having it with this though on the bike, you may even just chuck it on at times or if you just want to charge, because this is a powered mount. So once again, a powered mount, $45, and this one's 70. It's not too much to get it all mounted onto your bike, 110 bucks, give or take. Um, so we'll open the, they're equivalent to like a RAM mount now. Have a look how it comes. Okay, so all in one big zip lock. Cool. I didn't mind, I, sorry, I didn't mind as in I did lot. I liked the how sturdy and decent their handlebar mount looked and the way it mounted. So their handlebar mount, some of them are hinged on one side and only pull all the force on a single um, bolt and thread, whereas this is more your standard old school U-bracket like you find on a trailer axle type thing. Around the handlebar, onto there, it can cinch down small enough for the 14mm bar on the KLR. I'll put a bit of rubber on there and that's how it can mount. So obviously it has it that it mounts upwards like that. You could probably do whatever you really wanted. You could probably aim it down depending on your mounting or whatever you're doing. So that'll sit like that. Um, these are like quite the long bolts. These are the bolts for connecting the two amps um, four-way things. So we'll have a look how they may go because that's it there. So that's obviously our handlebar mount. Mounts there. A couple of nuts here. And these are for between here, I think. So we'll leave those. We've got some little split clips. That goes all there. And then, looks like these probably a, it's not 25, probably a 20 inch ball. That's quite nice, thick and decent. So that's what's going to mount onto our powered mount here. So you see those go back to back on those holes like that. And this one here, is their equivalent of a basic little small ram mount. So quite sturdy and decent and nice and short too. Because I don't want a massive amount. So from here, we can then put our ball in. One ball in. Let's see how this might work. Let's put them all together just to have a look at it. going to sit something like that I reckon give or take so that's going to go on the 
KLR's top mount like that. And that's going to then stand off and come out to me. So it looks like it might work quite well. We might as well go ahead and add the powered mount onto it and have a bit of a look how it looks. So that's how that will look, something like that. Instructions for the power mount, we'll look at that when we're going to wire it up. Okay, so nicely it's got rubber little grommets here. What sizing are these? Okay, so you can offset it if you want. They're hard plastic. Okay, yeah, sweet. So it comes with a little waterproof cover. So when you're not using it, that just lives on there, which is cool. All right, and it's going to sit like that. So I think I should be able to be fine as far as my phone. So my phone's in the way. I can offset it to the right, then have it back to the left. So it's actually you know, offset away from where my phone would be, but still facing me directly. So let's have a look how it might look on the... Um, I'll put this together briefly with these screws. Have a look how it might look. Okay, so I mounted that up. Um, in the mount, it actually came with rubber and then a little um, metal sleeve, so you can only tighten a certain way, like a bushing. So to make that a bit isolated and have it sealed and nice and you know, a bit of rubber between it. So you can't really use these big ones. I'm not really sure what they're for. You'd have to pop all that out. So I just used some small ones. Doesn't look as nice, but that's hidden at the back and did these up nice and tight. So they're actually done and on. So I had a spare little rubber, I guess, 12 mil. This one's 12, it's working on a 14 mil bar. That'll be nice enough, so at least when it's cinching down tight, it's not gonna scratch the bar at all. It can pull in as tight as it needs to then, so we'll give that a go. Okay, so we wanna try to place it here and then bring it offset to the right a little bit. So we'll see how we go. Okay, so we got that on there. I end up taking it off, putting some tape around it to hold a bit in place and that rubber's tight as now so you're actually moving the whole bar if you move that. So obviously your phone sits there and does its little bizarre vibrating away. That's not too bad. That's pretty much your view. And they're both square onto each other and I reckon I might be able to get it in. We'll have a test and see if we can get the actual device in. I haven't unboxed that yet. Okay, so basic unboxing of the Garmin GPS Map 66i. So this is going to be predominantly used on my motorbike and for hiking with the kids. I really just needed the in-reach, contact with the wife, let people know I'm safe, emergency aspect. But this was $679 Aussie dollars in Australia at the moment, over Easter. Um, the Mini 2 was $600 or $590, so not much difference to get all these extra features. So let's have a quick look what it looks like inside, how it comes. Got our manual. Apparently it's really worth reading these, so you know exactly how to use this pretty cool device and all its features. And then the device itself comes with a lanyard clip, and then of course, USB. This part out. Oh yeah, that just pushes back into there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Because it's obviously got the little electrode charge, so that just pops back. Sit her in, halfway, click her in. Boom. That's great. Okay, so that's going to be my view. Beautiful. That's good. If I'm having it up here, maybe to charge it, I might have it on my body. If the SOS can only be used on your person, you can't use it via the phone app, this will really be on my on me, on a chest buckle aspect, carabine or something like that instead. But as far as how it mounts, that's good. Um, only thing someone did mention to me on a post online, I was looking to put my USB here. They said with the bark buses on full lock, you're basically going to have full interference. So let's have a bit of a look. Uh, not so much, not these ones. They must have the slightly different bark busters. I reckon I'll come around that side and we'll have a look. Because USBs don't come out that much, that far before they can be moved. So there's nowhere, you know, we've got two or three inches here. So there's no problem with these bark busters. These are the KLR22 specific and they do have a tighter bend here. So maybe that's one of the reasons because they don't, so they don't foul here. Full lock. If you had your switch up here, you'd be worried about your switch if you had your, that switch, but that's our full lock. You're not gonna interfere with USBs. So that's perfect. So that's how she looks side on. 
front's fine. So that's perfect. So we'll we'll just I think hide this wire in the back. Bring it back out under the dash and it can just go straight into here when I put the USB in. This one here, I'm utilising the <coughs> part I bought. I didn't really need to, but now I'm glad I have got it. The power switch can come straight back to the battery um, and be hardwired, whereas this one can just go into here. So to remove it, I guess you just... Oh yeah, you pull, that's pretty neat. It's a nice little simple lever action. So lever, pull up, beautiful. So you can see where it starts clicking at this point. So you can sit it, cradle it, get it comfy. Bang. Perfect. Alright, that's it for this today then, for this video. <coughs> um, I won't really show you the next part because all it's going to be is hiding the wire. It's going to be nothing tricky. So as far as the Garmin connected, that's the open unbox install. Um, we'll see how we actually go with use and reviews. So once again, if you like this video, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, see me for new more videos on the KLR and camping. Cheers. Thanks everyone.